once again, welcome to Terrell Talk. I am having a great conversation with Danielle Musselman. If you recognize the name Musselman, you should, because it's all connected to Razorbacks basketball. Eric Musselman, the head coach of our team, and we appreciate that. It's so nice to get a chance to sit down and talk with you. This is the first time we've actually taken Terrell Talk on the road, so being in your lovely home has been awesome. I love it. Th thank you for coming. Um, we've talked about a number of things, but I think now I really want to ask you, what are some of the things that are important to you, to Danielle? Well, family is, n is number one, because um, really, at the end of the day, that's all that really matters. And so um, that's what is pretty much the focus of my life. You know, I, I used to work, and now I, I work, but not in the same capacity. Right. And as, you know, life changed and my husband's jobs became, you know, more all-consuming, basically, mm -hmm. I knew that someone kind of needed to step back and run the show at home a little bit more. And so um, that's what I've done, and it's a decision that I can just look at my family and the way everything is working and say, yeah, this is the way that this it is needs the way it to, should yeah, be. Yeah, it's the way it should be for us, you know, for us. And so that's just number one. And then we have extended family. My sister-in-law is in Dallas. My family, my mom, my brother, my sister are all in Atlanta. My mother-in-law is the only one who we're now further away okay. from. She's in San Diego. Okay. But um, we're now closer to the majority of our family. And so we're so excited. That's why I think we have a guest house out back, because they're <laughs> already scheduling. Like, when's the schedule coming out so we can start planning our trips? Yeah. Um, I actually used to live in Kansas City, one of my television jobs was there so I have so many friends that live there that are already like marking their calendars when they want to come so um, just having all that around is really what drives me and makes me happy yeah let's talk a little bit about your television career you were a sports ca caster I mean is that how, yeah. am I saying it right a sports <laughs> yeah. I mean you were with ESPN and I, I, what Fox Sports I yeah. mean you were all over the the map what was that like um, it was amazing, you know, I, I feel so blessed to have been able to do something as a career that was truly my passion. Yeah. Um, you know, so many people, they're just doing things for a paycheck. I can honestly say that being a sports anchor was my passion. It was what I knew that I wanted to do since I was about 19 years old. And to be able to actually be getting a paycheck to do these things um, it was it was almost surreal yeah. surreal excuse me at some points and um, I mean I can remember covering Super Bowls and uh, national championship games and all these things and it was just truly a blessing because it was just what I loved and I got to do it for a job yeah yeah so how did you get into that obviously I mean because you know I've, I've always done news um, I know sports to a certain degree but not well enough to actually and I shouldn't say that. I mean, of course, I can do anything. <laughs> I can do sports. I can do weather. But no, seriously, news has been my niche. Right. Um, you must have had a sports background to some degree to be able to report on sports. Right. I always loved sports. I grew up an athlete. I played, you know, basketball, softball, ran track, and everything. And then I went to Florida State, huge football school. Yeah whenever I was in school and I just stayed involved. And so I literally started when I was in college working as a production assistant when ESPN and when ABC would come to broadcast the Florida State football game. So that's when I kind of just got my foot into the door and it just went from there. You know, I started at a small station and I just worked my way up and mm -hmm. um, one day I got a phone call that ESPN wanted me to audition and after I um, fainted and got back up, <laughs> <laughs> Um, you know, it just went from there, and it was always my dream to report on a national level, and I was um, lucky enough to be able to do that for a long time. That is really cool. I mean, that's just awesome. Um, do you miss it? Do you look back on it and, and miss it? You said you, you might know, do a little freelance. You know, sometimes I do. Yeah, sometimes I do miss it. Really what I miss it are, are my friends, okay. you know, the relationships that you make over mm -hmm. those years. I'm still involved in sports with my husband's career, so I still kind of get that you know, that adrenaline rush, and I still attend a, a ton of sporting events and follow teams and all that kind of stuff. And um, and it's work, that's the other thing. People don't really 
I think, realize that, you know, it really is work because yeah. you're constantly having to just digest so much information in order to be on TV and know what you're talking about. Right. So, you know, Sundays I would spend all day watching every single football game. It was, you know, Sundays were out when I was at the NFL Network. I'm like, don't call me, don't bother me. I'm going to be watching football all day. Right. And um, so, you know, I don't have to do that anymore. I get to watch sports just for enjoyment. Mm -hmm. And um, there's something that's kind of nice about that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. You're, I mean, you're on your own time. You, you do do it as you please. What would you say to young people out there, you know, because I always get people who are trying to break into the business or they're trying to get to that next level or, you know, whatever the case. Um, but I speak from a news perspective. So from a sports uh, anchor perspective, what would you say to especially young women mm -hmm. that are interested in that part of the industry? How do they get in? Well, honestly, the first tip that I give people is make sure that you love it. Mm -hmm. Make sure that you're passionate about it. Because if you are not passionate about it, um, it's so competitive and so hard to even get in that sometimes you're going to have to be working hours and days that, you, that are just going to make your life terrible. Mm -hmm. And you have to be able to get through that part that's not so glamorous and fun in order to get to where you really want to be. And so you're not going to be willing and able to get through that. You know, it might be two years, it might be three years, it could be a little bit longer, you don't know. Um, so make sure that you're passionate about it, passionate about it, that's the first thing. And the second thing is what I tell people, get involved whenever you're in college if you can. Um, especially if you're at a school with a big football or basketball program or baseball program because they are going to be broadcast on these networks, ESPN, mm -hmm. you know, ABC, all the CBS Sports, all these different networks. And they're coming in, they're hiring kids to do whatever. You know, it can be errands, it can be whatever. It's not, you know, nothing glamorous. Because that's what you did that. And that's what I did. And honestly, people that I worked with when I was, you know, a college sophomore, a college junior, were the same ones that were hiring me to be a sideline reporter years later. So get in, make those relationships whenever you're young and keep those contacts and right. you know things can happen. Yeah, that's great advice. Danielle, thank you so much for spending time with us on Terrell Talk. Thank you for You've having me. Great. You have the absolute best smile. <laughs> I mean, you know, and one of the things about television, I don't know that a lot of people know this, but um, a lot of news directors I find as I was coming along if, if, especially women, if she had a nice smile, it was like, I mean, and especially morning shows, there was something about morning shows, if she had a great smile, I mean, she was almost yeah. a shoe in for the job. Yeah. Who could, who cares if she could read? <laughs> Just a nice Just smile. smile. I appreciate that because I had braces for a very long time. Oh my word. And a long period of time, my smile wasn't so nice. So I appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being a part of Terrell Talk, letting us into your beautiful home. Thank you. And I want to thank all of you for tuning in to Terrell Talk. We'll see you next time. Take care, everybody.